it's me again, K-Town Fat Cat. I'm coming back at you today with another baseball card opening. And this is going to be wax packs for 1987 tops. I always love these cards. These cards had the wood grain around them. And I just thought it made a really, really sharp card. They have the 1986 season stats on the back. And that season we had, let's see, MVP in the National League was Mike Schmidt. The National League Cy Young Award was Mike Scott. And in the AL, we had the Cy Young going to Roger Clemens. And the MVP going to Roger Clemens also. So those will be some cool cards to look for. Anyway, you know the deal. I like to open these guys up and look for um, any stars. I don't, I'm not just looking for rookie cards. Like a lot of the other videos out there, I see those guys just flying through. Looking for that one special card oh i remember that spring fever baseball i love it okay here we go 1987 tops bruce bochi mark sullivan Neil Allen, Ruben Sierra, Ruben Sierra was a super player for the uh, Rangers when he was younger, and I do believe Ruben is one of the few people who can actually say they were robbed out of an MVP award. Um, let's see, this is his rookie card here, so yeah. Pretty sweet rookie stats there. 16 homers, 55 RBIs, 10 triples. Very sweet. Anyway, he's in the American League. They went through a little run where they were given like MVPs out that felt like they were kind of giving them to older guys. You had like a run where Ricky Henderson, Cal Ripken Jr., and Robin Yount got the uh, MVPs, and um, they did have good seasons, but there were some other guys who, who probably should have been in the mix. And one of those years, Ruben Sierra should have won an MVP award. Let's see, Doug Sisk. Randy O'Neill. Steve Yeager. Oda B. McDowell. Lee Guterman, Bill Matlock, gotta like a Bill Matlock card, four-time National League batting champ. Let's see here. So Bill won in 75 and 76 with the Cubs, and then he won in 81 and 83 with the Pirates. At this point, he had a 307 lifetime batting average and 1900 hits. But yeah, four time batting champ. Steve Sachs. He was a solid, solid player. He had over 200 hits in a season and this is a stolen bases he had 40 steals this year the leader was uh, Vince Coleman with 107 Carl Willis Carney Lansford I think Carney won two batting titles himself let's see here yeah he won an 81 with the Red Sox and I can't remember what year it was, but I'm sure he had a second one with the A's. I'll have to do some checking on that, 
but we know he's definitely got one. You can see it in italics right there in 81 to strike shortened year. He batted 336. I feel really confident after 86 here he won another batting title. So, Luis Salazar, Dan Petrie, Glenn Hoffman, and Ken Howell. Okay, not too much to talk about there. Let's see here. Well, I'm just going to tell you right now. I've, I've had enough. I'm going through these packs and having these walks down memory lane. And darn it, I've got to try this gum. Don't do it. Don't do it, guys. Okay, guys, sorry about that. It's a pretty rotten taste, but it wasn't anything that some good southern sweet tea wouldn't take away. Okay, here we go. We have Dale Murphy, two-time league MVP back-to-back -back in 82 and 83 for the Braves. He also had a 30-30 season, 30 home runs, 30 stolen bases. This is back before, you know, the trend really got huge. And around the 86, 87 seasons, uh, Dale did it. He was, I think, the first person to do it since Hank Aaron did it. So it was a pretty, no, excuse me, not Hank Aaron. Maybe in the National League, but, but uh, Bobby Bonds had done it like five or six times. Anyway... Dale Murphy, he was just Mr. America, if you wanted to say. He was squeaky clean, but he was huge, like 6'6", six, six, um, Mormon. He he just, when the Braves were huge, he was their number one star. And I just, I don't know, I hate he didn't stick around to hit two more home runs he finished with 398 and i think if he would have broke the 400 barrier that would have helped him get into the hall now we're going to have to wait on the veterans committee to decide his fate but it's a shame he spent 15 years trying to get the votes to get in this last couple of years he he was there was he had a kind of a backing of people trying to help him out but it just didn't come to be he didn't get voted in but i do believe in our lifetime we will see dale murphy enter the hall of fame any two-time mvp i just i don't know it's hard to keep them out but look at that the italics shows you know denotes league leaders so if you look over on the left look at that he had a uh, string of consecutive games played that i think broke 700 and that was a pretty big deal and you'll see how consistent he was. His, his home runs there. He had, uh, what, 33 and 80. Then you had to strike short in the year. He had 13. And then 36, 36, 36. Then 37. Then he had 29. He had a little off year. But the next year he comes back in 87. Hits 44. I mean, just, I don't know. Great, great ball player. And uh, he was just huge. And I, when I was a kid, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why I care so much about him getting into the Hall of Fame. But you'll see there in '83, he had 36 homers, 30 stolen bases, led league in slugging two years in a row. Dale Murphy, Hall of Fame. Glenn Davis. I spoke about Glenn when I opened the Fleer cards and in, in the uh, previous video and I said he'd get you about 30 home runs a year let's see yep there is a start 31 homers 101 runs batted in Jim Pankovitz Mike Young Roger McDowell Chris Corderoli. 
I don't know if you're about my age, man. And as I go through these, I know you're going, Oh, I remember all these pictures so well. Now this is John Tudor. The year before this, so like I said, this has the 86 stats. In 85, John Tudor won 21 games. He had a sub two ERA. I think it was like 1.93 or something like that. But anyway, he had 10 shutouts. And he's the last major leaguer to reach that milestone. Let's look here. Yeah, he was 21 and 8. 169 strikeouts, 14 complete games, 10 shutouts. And there's that 1.93 ERA. 10 shutouts. And I think prior to him, the last person to have 10 would have been Jim Palmer, I believe. Uh, pretty sure I'm right on that. I know Palmer had 10. And I believe that he was the last person before Tudor. He came in second to Cy Young, to Dwight Gooden in the Cy Young voting in 85. Dan Billardello. Jay Tibbs. Michael Jack Schmidt. As consistent a home run hitter as you could have. Mike Schmidt hit 30 home runs in one season, 13 times in his career. And in the 70s, I, I know it was like, he hit 38 exactly, like three years in a row. Three-time National League MVP. He won back-to-back -back in 80, 81, and then this season with 86. Just unbelievable. Finished with 548. Barry Larkin. I'm pretty sure this is a Barry Larkin rookie card. And he's in the Hall of Fame now. Yes, it is. Barry Larkin. Rookie card. Check him out. He was just a solid, solid player. Um, don't know much about his stats. I just I was never a huge fan, but I know he finished with over 2,000 hits and 200 home runs. And anyway, he's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Dennis Eckersley. Now this is when he was still a starting pitcher with the Cubs. He's he and uh, let's see, John Smoltz. They're the only two pitchers that I remember who were. I mean, Kerry Wood. You could throw in there a little bit, but Dennis Eckersley went from being one of the best starting pitchers to one of the best relief pitchers, as did John Smoltz. Let's see what, what I can remember about Eckersley. I know he had 20 wins in a season. He had 200 strikeouts in a season. I want to say he has a ERA title when he was a starter, maybe. And then when he went on to the A's after he was traded from the Cubs, he ended up winning a Cy Young and MVP award in the same year. He finished with like 390 saves, over 200 wins, over 2,000 strikeouts. Let's see here. Okay, I was wrong about the ERA title by far. But there's the 20 wins in 78. In 76, he had 200 strikeouts. But as you'll see, as all, all these games as a starter, you know, he had 151 here. So he would have needed 49 more to get the 200 wins. I'm going to say he got there to 200 wins. He definitely broke 2,000 strikeouts. And look, 20 shutouts in his career. He's, he's a Hall of Famer. He's in there. I just... I wish there was more of an action shot of him here pitching. He had like a almost submarine style pitching. It's like a three quarter sidearm. Joel Skinner. Dodgers leader. Ron Karkovice. 
and Gary Matthews. Well, Gary Matthews had over 2,000 hits in his career. Let's see. 1972, as far as this goes, 1,070 runs, 231 homers, 955 runs batted in. When I used to go through these cards, that's pretty much what I would, I would turn it over. I'd see how many hits and runs they had. And usually guys with a thousand runs and a thousand runs batted in, you know, would catch my eye. The 2,000 hits, if they had 250 home runs or more, I would notice that. But um, then I would start looking at their individual seasons and start looking for numbers and just, I love the stats on the back of cards. I'm sorry, some cards, the pictures are burnt in my mind, but mostly it was the stats. Ray Searage. Hmm. Two to go. Let's see what we got. I'm not eating that. So let's go. Okay. Raphael Billiard. Charlie Huff. I loved old Charlie Huff. He ended up taking forever to really come into his own, and then he ended up winning over 200 games and had over 2,000 strikeouts as an old man. Let's see here. Say 131 wins. Look at look at his win column, and go down, and then you see what is 16, 15, 16, 14, 17. When you when you played as long as him, the numbers get pretty small, and I don't have my glasses on. But he ended up being a great great pitcher. It just took him forever to get there. Charlie Huff. Going from Charlie Huff, let's segue right into Charlie Hustle. Pete Rose, one of my all-time favorites, man. And 4,256 hits, over 720 doubles, over 2,000 runs scored, you know, 10 times 200 or more hits in one season, 44-game hitting streak, MVP, I think, in 73, World Series titles, just... Man, he, he's just a stat hound's wet dream. And and I loved his stats. And I just loved the way he played the game. Let me focus on this for you guys. Come on, baby. Where are you at? There you are. 4,256 hits. I said over 720 doubles. He had 746, 135 triples, and 160 home runs. He en ended up having over 1,000 extra base hits. You know, over 3,000 singles. Just crazy. 3,000. If you took away all of his extra base hits, the man still had 3,000 hits. That's just nuts. And look at his runs. 2,165 runs scored. Just blows my mind. And I hate it. He led the league in 81. You see he had 140 hits. I feel like that would have been his 11th 200 hit season. I really do. I think he would have pulled off another one. And that would have really put him in the stratosphere. I mean, Ichiro just came along and... Last I saw in the news, he had 4,255 hits combined with Japan and United States, and um, excuse me, Japan and the major leagues. And Ichiro had 10 seasons in a row with 200 hits, but he did have a single alone 200 hit season in Japan, so that gives him 11. I believe, had the players not striked in '81, Pete would have had 11 in the major leagues and Ty Cobb had nine so you know Pete was all alone at 10 for a long time and then Ichiro came out and came over here and rattled off 
10 in a row from the start of his career. But I just love to look at the back of baseball cards. I always have. I immediately flip them over after I check out the picture on the back. And back in the day when I was young and I would see the italics and see these league leaders, man, I would focus on them for a long time. I had notebooks I would write down stuff in so I wouldn't forget it. You know, now, the older I am, I have Excel spreadsheets, you know. I have some Excel spreadsheets where I've got at least 40 man hours in them. Lynn Matuzak, Tom Lasorda, loved old Tommy. Rick Rushel, or Rick Ruschel, however you say it, I say Rushel. Uh, you may, um, you may remember him as, let's see, him and Rick Roden, they were on the same team, on the Pirates team together. I just remember the two Ricks, the two Rick R's, and I think Russia ended up with 200 wins. Let's see, Roden... It's hard for me to get this focused this time, guys. I'm sorry about this. There we go. 162 wins. I wouldn't bet on it. Not that late in his career. But he did have a 20-win season, and he had 20 um, career shutouts. But sure enough, Rick Russell and Rick Roden at the same time, they were fantastic. Chuck Tanner, before Bobby Cox came along. Ben Ogilvy. Ben led the American League in 1980. He tied with Reggie Jackson. Uh, they both had 40 home runs or 41 home runs that year. And, uh, yeah, 41. And let's see, what did he have? So that was 80. Then the strike shortened year came along. He had 14. Then he came back with 34, and then he just dropped off after that. But at this point, 235 career home runs, and he's just one of those unassuming league leaders in home runs. You know, not a lot of people know about old Ben. Ben Ogilvy, 41 homers, 1980, tied with Reggie Jackson. Doug Corbett, Donnie Hill, Al Newman, Chet Lemon. Now, tell me that's not a great, great action shot. If I was a player and I had a baseball card made of me, I would want it to look something similar to that. That is just phenomenal. Jeff Reed, Mike Witt, look at his tall lanky butt, I want to say he was 6'7", let's see here, yeah, 6'7", 185 pounds, oh my gosh, if you had now, in the 21st century, a six foot seven player, he's gonna weigh 250 pounds minimum. But look, 15, 15, 18 as far as wins, and then he had 196, 180, and 208 strikeouts. He was he was a, a good a good pitcher, man. Kind of like a a version of Randy Johnson, but Randy was 6'10", so just imagine that three inches taller. Willie Randolph. I used to love Willie Randolph. Jerry Harrison. O M G. The man. Nolan Ryan. Oh God, that's crazy. Look right over there. Nolan Ryan was my favorite player when I was a kid. I loved the wild Fast, fast ball pitchers. Nolan finished his career with uh, 324 wins, 61 shutouts, seven no-hitters. I mean, next closest is four. 
and he had seven. 5,714 strikeouts in a career, and nobody else has 5,000. And it, I don't know. I don't know what there is left to say. He he pitched so well for so long that now when the steroid era, you know, blew up and everybody was looking at guys going, well, how can they be that good that late in their career? You know, unless they had steroids and then people would look back at him and say, well, what about Nolan Ryan? So it started bringing up people saying, well, maybe Nolan was, was on the juice, but I'm telling you right now, he's just an old country boy who was, he worked hard in the off season and he had a God given, you know, hundred mile an hour fastball that he carried, you know, a fastball up into up in the nineties, up into his forties, you know, his 40, uh, 40 year old plus years. So I don't believe Nolan, you know, took any steroids, but one thing I want to point out about this, this, uh, Astros, you know, this year, he's the strikeout king by this point. You know, he has over 4,000 strikeouts coming into this 86 season. And, you know, you look on the Astros and you think he's the man. Well, Mike Scott had 306 strikeouts in 86 for the Astros. So Nolan had to take a back seat to Mike Scott as a strikeout king uh, that year for the Astros. Now, Nolan took it back from him the very next year in 87, but 4,277 strikeouts. If, you know, he would have retired right here, he would still be in third place all time. But he had another 300 strikeout season in him after this 86 season. And uh, that gave him, what, six for his career. Randy Johnson came along, and he's got six 300 strikeout seasons also. But the big unit never got to 5,000, and Nolan has 5,714 for his career now. So let's look here. 253 wins. This is in 1986. 253 wins. 42-77, and 54 shutouts. This man still pitched two no-hitters after this year. I mean, I can kind of see why somebody would say something about steroids, but he was my favorite, and I just can't, I can't bring myself to believe it. Nolan Ryan. Here we go, last but not least. Dale's Vim. <laughs> Pedro Guerrero. I used to love Pedro, man. Nobody mentions him anymore, but he was one of the best hitters in the National League in the 80s. 30 home runs, you know, over 100, 100 RBIs. He's going to bat you 300 to 330. Just Great player. Let's see what we got here stats wise. Yeah, look at there. 32, 32, 33. Had, he led the league in slugging. A couple years over 20 stolen bases. 320 batting average. You know, I mean, lifetime 304 hitter at this point. Very cool, man. Nobody really mentions Pedro anymore, but. He, he was a great, great player. Great hitter. Benny DiStefano. <laughs> I get challenged every time I make one of these videos. Mark Clear. Rick Burleson. Rupert Jones. That's a, that's a good picture if you think about it. You see the umpire's hand. Looks like he's holding a strike counter in his hand. Then you see the catcher 
catcher's mitt right there, good profile of catcher, and then a good proof profile of Rupert there batting with his lucky 13 jersey. My man, Don Baylor. Don Baylor, I've told you a couple times, and I'm going to tell you again. 1979 AL MVP with the Angels. 36 home runs, 139 RBIs. He went on to play for the Red Sox and the Yankees. Let's see here. And where's he at right here? 315 lifetime homers, 1179 RBIs. But the glaring season you see, look up his RBI total. <laughs> his RBI totals for the years. That 139 really jumps out at you. You know? And like I said, Jim Rice was one of my favorite players. He led the league the previous year in 78 with 139 runs batted in also. But Don ended up setting the record for getting hit by a pitch. We've learned that in one of my videos. I did go do some research, and he did break Ron Hunt's record. And then Craig Biggio broke his record. But I wonder if uh, anybody joked at uh, Don, like, the way he's holding that bat was some kind of, you know, taking a leak innuendo or something. I don't know. But I always wondered that. Like, you know, you know how you could do something serious, I mean, silly and put a serious look on your face for a picture? I mean, there could have been buddies around him ribbing him when he was doing that. I don't know. I don't know if he was a joker or not. All I, all I know is the stats. But just, he, he was built like a power hitter, and he sure was one. Joe Hesketh. Arginus Salazar. Pete Ladd. Davey Lopes, record breaker. Let's see what they got here. Most stolen bases in a season for a 40-year-old. Well, let's just see. He eclipses a 72-year-old standard. 25 stolen bases in 86. Let's see. The former record was the 23 swipes compiled by Pirates Hall of Famer Honus Wagner in 1914. Wow. Very cool. Davy Lopes, he led the league with like 77 steals when he was with the Dodgers one year. He he had he could run the base pass, that's for sure. Fernando Valenzuela. Remember Fernando Mania? I actually talk about him in another one of my videos, but you know, what can you say about him? He he just pitched till his arm almost fell out or fell off. <laughs> he he uh, threw a screwball, which goes against everything, you know, your shoulder and everything wants to do. Um, it's a wonder he, he, he didn't buckle before then. But Fernando was going to get you close to 20 wins a year. He was going to get you close to 200 strikeouts a year. He was going to put in about 275 innings a year. You know, he was good for that. But his rookie year, he, he was something else. Eight shutouts in a strike-shortened year. You know, he led the league in um, strikeouts. He beat Steve Carlton. Steve Carlton had 179 strikeouts. Um, he had 180 that year. But look at that. He started 25 games that year. He completed 11. Now look at 86. 20 complete games. Imagine that, guys. Imagine that. He won 21 games that year, 242 strikeouts, 20 complete games, three shutouts. I think he came in second to Mike Scott in Cy Young voting this year. But up here in 81, he did win the Cy Young and the Rookie of the Year that year. Just solid pitcher, man. I, I, I miss people like Fernando Valenzuela. Bobby Bonilla. Wow. Him and Bonds, man. What a tandem they were when they were with the Pirates. Bonilla was going to hit 300 for you. He was going to drive in 100 runs and hit 30 home runs a year. Let's see here. This 
is his rookie card. Unless the power, unless he had one. No, that's they're both eighty six. White Sox and Pirates. Okay, I did not realize he started with the White Sox in eighty six. I had no idea that because I've always seen this card. So yeah, he went on to play for the Mets. Just a good ball player. He ended up. Um, at one time, he was the better of the two, him and Barry Bonds, uh, when they were on the Pirates. He was one of the highest paid baseball players in baseball at one time, um, and he deserved it. But his career kind of faded away. Frank Tanana, not a lot of people talk about Frank. He led, uh, I think he led the majors in strikeouts in 1977. He was with the Angels. Now, who else was in the Angels back then, was with the Angels? Nolan Ryan. And um, Nolan had an off year that year and didn't get his 300 strikeouts. And I think Tanana had like 277, 269, 269, I believe, that year. And, uh, and led the league and hurt his arm. He had a couple 200 strikeout seasons and ended up hurting his arm. Yeah, 269, 261, 205. But um, he had seven shutouts that one season, ERA title. But he ended up having about 2,500 strikeouts. He's high on the list in career strikeouts. He didn't get 3,000, but he ended up getting, I think, over 2,500, maybe close to 2,700. Something's telling me that 2,700 strikeouts he ended up with. Frank Tanana. Jim Rice one of my all-time favorite players he had three years in a row where he had 200 hits 30 home runs he he averaged 130 home runs a year i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i'm right on that he, he averaged at least 120 runs about it in a year for three year stretch in 77, 78, 79. Oh, we're not gonna be able to see it on here, but this is his own base percentage. He had 384 on base percentage right there. Of course, Wade Boggs led with 453 that year. But but Jim Rice, he made it to the Hall of Fame late. He got in after several years on the ballot. I think he was running down to the end like Dale Murphy was, I was telling you about. Anyway. If you're a stats hound like me, go check it out. In the late 70s, no one better. Mitch Williams. Mitch Williams, um, let's see. Relief pitcher, blazing fastball, mullet. I think they called him Wild Thing. Like on the movie, um, oh, hell. Major League, yeah, the Cleveland Indian movie. And uh, Charlie Sheen played Wild Thing. I want to say that was Mitch Williams' nickname when he played. He was going to get you about 30 saves a year. Let's see. And, of course, this would be his rookie card. And his save total is a whopping eight. But here's, I always love these neat facts. You know, May 28th, 1986, Joe Cowley fanned the first seven batters he faced in a game for the White Sox. That's pretty sweet. And Dave Schatz, Schatzeter, Schatzeter. I don't know. I don't know. But if you look in the back back there, I kind of set that up in order of the uh, their strikeout totals. Back then, that was, I think, if, maybe Sutton don't belong, but he was a three, he had won 324 games, you know, over 3,000 strikeouts in his career. Let's see here. Right there, he was 295 and 3,300 strikeouts. But, Ended up, I think, you know, we had Nolan with 57-14. Steve Carlton had like uh, 4,138 or something like that. And Bly Levin had 3,701. Seaver had 
40, I believe, something like that. And then I do believe Don Sutton broke uh, Walter Johnson's record of 3,508. I'm pretty sure that was the record they were shooting for back in 83. Um, I know Gaylord Perry passed it in 83. But anyway, Burt Blylevin, he ended up with, I think, 288 wins or something. He didn't quite get 300 wins, but he finished his career third in all-time strikeouts, and I think he had 60 shutouts. Yeah, he did. I know he did. He had 60 shutouts. So, 61 shutouts. I think 55. He had 58. Sutton had 58. 61. And he had 60. So, they all had in the high 50s and shutouts. Let's see what this one says for Carlton. We'll never know. Not with a FLIR. Something's telling me 55 people. I don't know. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you would, keep checking back. I'm going to keep bringing videos for you. And I hope that you do like my videos. Give them a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about them. All I do is offer you up a, a walk down memory lane and maybe tell you a little bit of something you didn't know. And I know in the comments, you know, people are telling me things I didn't know. I love it. You know, that's that's what I love. I love just talking sports with people. So, anyway, until next time, this is the K-Town Fat Cat signing out.